Hello, everyone. Now, seniors, let's go to relative atomic mass, relative molecular mass, relative formula mass, and a few other calculations. And then, first thing, the relative atomic mass is a you know number signifying how heavy an, an atom is by comparing its mass to the mass by comparing its mass to one twelfth of the mass of one atom of carbon 12 we'll get to that a little bit more later so relative atomic mass this is the number of times one atom of an element the relative atomic mass of an element is defined as the number of times one atom of the element is heavier than 1 over 12 of the mass of one atom of carbon 12. let me take that again the relative atomic mass of an atom of an element is the number of times one atom of the element is heavier than one twelfth of the mass of one atom of carbon 12. so it's as simple as that it's just a ratio so we can also define that relative atomic mass as the ratio what mass of one atom of an element it's also defined as the mass of one atom of an element over one twelfth of the mass of one atom of carbon 12. so you practice saying it many times and you will be able to remember just use this ratio the relative atomic mass of an element is the mass of one atom of that element divided by one twelfth of the mass of one atom of carbon 12. this ratio is what is referred to as relative atomic mass of an element or its atom now the relative atomic mass of an element has no unit because it is a ratio of two masses as you can see here this will be in grams this will also be in grams so both will cancel out each other and there will be no unit in the final value grams will cancel grams carbon 12 is used as the reference atom in mass spectrometry the branch of chemistry where we study the masses of atoms of elements and other smaller particles like that is called mass spectrometry we use several advanced techniques to get accurate answers for the masses of protons neutrons electrons you know masses of atoms and so on now let's go to relative molecular mass that is symbolized as rmm you can see there's a difference between a molecule and an atom an atom is just one atom of aluminum but a molecule will be cl2 you understand two molecules of chlorine and two atoms of chlorine forming one molecule so when we say relative molecular mass we may be referring to a molecule of an element like cl2 or a molecule of a compound like h2 sometimes this one is referred to as relative formula mass but it can also correctly be called relative molecular mass you know, since it consists of more than one atom now the relative molecular mass of an element or a compound is the mass of one molecule of that element or compound divided by the mass of okay can you see i've made a mistake here so i have to correct it it should be divided by one twelfth divided by one twelfth one twelfth of the mass of one atom of what carbon 12. so that's the correct definition the relative molecular mass of an element or a compound is the mass of one molecule of that element of compound divided by one twelfth of the mass of one atom of carbon 12. this ratio is called the relative molecular mass of an element or a compound when we start using it you will get it more let's not, sometimes this one is referred to as relative formula mass if it means the mass of if we are referring to a molecule we call it relative molecular mass but when we are referring to a molecule of a compound like you know h2so4 like uh, you know zncl2 we we can call this relative formula mass this one too relative formula mass 
But when we refer to molecules that consist of only one element, we can call it like H2 now. I can call this relative molecular mass. And I can also call it relative formula mass. This one is more commonly called relative molecular mass. But when it has when it has you know many other elements, more than one element in it, it's better called relative formula mass. But you can use relative molecular mass for it too. Both are interchangeable. So let's go to the examples. The examples are here from this source. So you can you know grab a copy and use it to follow along. Now, question one says, calculate the relative molecular masses or formula masses of the following elements or compound. This is calcium, hydrogen, trazocarbonate, 4. I did not write the names of the molecules. You can just do well to write it in front or beside it. This is calcium. This compound is called calcium, hydrogen, trioxocarbonate, 4. Because naming is very important, so... I'll be adding the names. I'll be adding the names where they are omitted. Now, in calcium hydrogen trazocarbonate four, this is the formula of the compound. You will see it has one calcium. You now multiply everything inside the bracket here by two. Everything inside the bracket should be multiplied by what two. So when I have HCO three two, this means that in this compound I have two hydrogens. I have two carbons. I'm multiplying everything inside the bracket by two, and that we have six oxygen. Every time we write oxygen, we always keep it in brackets so it doesn't look like 60. So it doesn't make this six look like 60. <clears throat> Are you getting what I'm saying, senior? So every time I write hydrogen, I'll be writing, I'll be writing, uh, every time I write oxygen, I mean, I'll be writing it in bracket. So the number behind it doesn't make it look like. 60 70 and so on. so that gives us what 40 the relative atomic mass of calcium is 40 that gives us 40 plus 2 times 1 the relative atomic mass of hydrogen is 1 then plus 2 times c which is what 2 times 12 plus what 6 times 18 plus 6 times 18 oh have i been using 18 no oxygen is 16 not 18 let me correct that. Oxygen is 16, not 18. So 6 times 16 is what? 96. 6 times 16 should be 96. You add everything up and fill this blank with your final answer. Is that clear? Now, next compound is ion 2 hydroxide. We call this compound ion make sure you include the names please so that you can learn along we call this compound ion, ion 2 hydroxide now in this compound there is in this compound there is one ion there is two oxygens multiply everything inside the bracket by two that's two oxygens and there's what two hydrogen there's one inside the bracket one hydrogen one oxygen inside the bracket but there's two outside the bracket that makes it two oxygens and what two hydrogens see two oxygens i'm not going to write two o because anybody looking at this way see it as 20 so i try to keep the oxygen in bracket are you getting that senior so that makes it 56 relative atomic mass of iron is 56 that of oxygen is 16 so 2 times 16 then the relative atomic mass of hydrogen is 1 2 times 1 2 so that will give us our final answer you add up what you get and put your you know final answer here now let's continue chlorine cl2 this one is simple just 2 cl cl2 is the same as 2 cl2 times 35.571 the relative atomic mass of chlorine is 35.5 so we multiply it by 2 to get what 71 al2o3 in this compound okay i said i'll be putting the names this is a chlorine molecule this is a what chlorine molecule i can simply call it chlorine no need to put the molecule just simply say chlorine so Chlorine is diatomic Cl2. In Al2O3, this is called aluminum oxide. 
this compound is called what aluminium oxide in al2o3 there's two aluminium and there's what three oxygen so i put the oxygen in bracket so it doesn't look like 30. so you compute the masses like this the relative atomic mass of aluminum is 27. one atom of aluminum has a mass of 27. one atom of oxygen has a mass of 16. so you put your answer together 54 plus 48 you add you get your final answer here let's move fast this is ozone this compound is called ozone ozone good three times oh one molecule of ozone has three oxygens three times 16 48 Put your answer down this is magnesium trazonitrate nitrate five this compound is called what magnesium this compound is called magnesium tri oxo this compound is called magnesium trazonitrate nitrate five so there's in the compound there's one magnesium there's you know two nitrogen there's one nitrogen in the bracket here, but multiplied by two will give you two nitrogen because it's two outside the bracket. Three oxygens inside the bracket multiplied by two gives you what? Six oxygens. So the atomic mass of magnesium is 24, nitrogen is 14, oxygen is 16. You put everything together, get your answer. This one is called ammonium sulfate ion 3 tetrahedral sulfate 6. I don't know what hydrate this one will be called. But the molecule has it's a double salt which is also hydrated the molecule has uh, 24 molecules of water crystallization so a double salt is a salt dionysis in solution to produce uh, two cations nh4 plus and fe3 plus and one anion so42 minus so you will get to that when we get to, to acid bases and salt but what this means is simple expand from the left this is two nitrogen from the left this is two nitrogen one inside the bracket then two outside that makes it two nitrogen this is containing what eight hydrogen four times two eight hydrogen there's four inside the bracket multiply everything in the bracket by two so you have to multiply the four hydrogens by two also that gives you eight, eight hydrogens there's one sulfur here in SO4, there's one sulfur and four oxygens here. So I'm going from left to right. There's two ion in this part. So two Fe. How many sulfur in this part? There's one in the bracket times three. There's three sulfur. I've written it there. Then there's four oxygens in the bracket. Four oxygens in the bracket times what? Four oxygens in the bracket times three. That gives for 12 oxygens. And then there's, you know, 24 times H2 will give you 48H. You understand? 48H. 48 then 24 times O will give you 24O. So spread out everything like that and put their masses. You get your final answer. Iron. The relative atomic mass of iron is 56. So put 2 times 56 here, yeah. all of that I've mentioned before, even I want to, you add the masses you get. I've not added everything, so let me just claim this so you don't get confused. You have to be the one to, you know, find the values one after the other, value of each one. You write it down up to the end and you add. You get the correct answer if you don't make mistakes. There's, uh, the answers are at the back of the textbook we are using, so... You can just look it up there to see if yeah done the right thing or not. But it's simple. Here, zinc tetrahedral surface six. This is zinc. This compound is called zinc tetraoxo sulfate. This is called zinc tetrahedral sulfate six. So it has one zinc, one sulfur. Four oxygens. So you put the masses together like that, get your answer. H2SO4. This is tetraoxo sulfate 6 acid. This is tetraoxo sulfate. This is tetraoxo sulfate 6 acid. It has 
two hydrogens, one sulfur, four oxygens. Two hydrogens, one sulfur, four oxygens. So you you know spread it out like this, put the relative atomic masses, and simplify to get your answer. That's also very straightforward. This is called <coughs> this is called tetra tetra. This is called tetra oxo phosphate five acid. So it has three hydrogens, one phosphorus, four oxygens. So you spread it out, put the masses. Put the relative atomic masses of each atom. Get your answer. This is called. This is called. This is called. Okay, we have to work it out. I think this is called. Uh, okay, if we work it out, what are we going to get? Let's quickly work out the name of the compound. Three P B and four O. The oxidation number is zero here. So that's three lead plus four oxygens to give zero. Oxygens, we know that it is what? Minus two to give zero. So that means three PB minus eight is zero. Three PB is what? Zero plus eight. So three PB is equal to plus eight. Now, if you do, if you do PB is equal to plus 8 over 3, you are going to get 2 point something. So that means, what it means is that not all atoms, not all the lead atoms have the same atomic number. Not all of them are, have the same atomic number, have the same oxidation number. Not all the lead atoms have the same oxidation number. For 3 atoms of lead to produce a positive charge of plus 8, the only possible way is that one lead will be charged plus 2, or one lead will be charged plus four and the other two will be charged plus two and what plus two that's the only way this compound can have its lead donating a charge of plus eight so what we call this compound is uh, is uh, okay see how we are going to form the name now very simple i'm going to just use an idea that we use for iron Fe3O4. So we call this compound, we call this compound lead. We call it lead four. You understand? Lead four di lead two oxide. Can you see how we formed the name? Can you see how we formed the name? Very simple and very, very funny. Lead four. To show that the compound has an ion of lead charged four plus but it now has two it now has two ions of lead each charged two plus so that's why we call the compound lead four di lead two oxide i think that's the correct way to name it so spread out the masses let me clean this spread out the masses spread out the you know molecule you get 3pb plus 4o and that gives you what that gives you 3 times 207 plus 4 times 16 the relative atomic mass of lead is 207 the relative atomic mass of lead is 207 so that helps you get your correct answer you add up everything this is called this is called this is called sodium this is called sodium dioxo aluminate 3 that's the name of this compound sodium dioxo aluminate 3 so it has two sodiums one two sodiums two sodiums it has one aluminum atom and two oxygen atoms so if you put everything together you are going to get 2Na plus 1Al plus 2O. Put the O in brackets so it doesn't look like 20. Put their masses and get your answer. That's very straightforward. M, this is called potassium. I think we did this previously. This is called potassium. This is called potassium 
potassium hepta oxo dichromate this is called potassium hepta oxo dichromate 6 it's a salt it's a salt it has you know two potassium 2k it has two chromium atoms 2 cr and it has seven oxygen atoms so i spread it out the relative atomic mass of chromium is 52 so put the relative atomic mass of chromium add everything up you get your answer and this is zinc trioxonitrate 5 this is zinc this is called zinc trioxonitrate 5 hexahydrate this is called zinc trioxonitrate 5 hexahydrate meaning what two zinc sorry meaning one zinc two nitrogen atoms six oxygen do you understand how we got two nitrogen six oxygen inside the bracket there's one nitrogen if you multiply it by the two outside the bracket just like normal algebra everything inside the bracket gets multiplied by the constant outside the bracket so if you multiply the one nitrogen by two you get two nitrogen atoms in the compound then three oxygens by two you get six oxygen that's how we oxygens that's how we got six oxygens two nitrogens this one six h2 that's six times h2 making 12 h then six times o1 o is the same thing as o1 six times o1 will give you six o so you put the masses together and get your answer these place spaces must not be blank make sure you fill them with the steps that should be there first you write out the values of this product then simplify further to get your total that is very straightforward we call this one potassium we call this compound potassium hexa cyano ferrit potassium hexa cyano ferrit 3 you know because it has potassium it has this is cyanide it has six cyanide that's the reason for the hexa cyano hexa cyano then it has you know it has ferrous ion or fer uh, it has ferrous ion let's say it like that so the ferrous ion is charged three plus that's why we say ferret three so here the compound has we are looking for masses now the compound has three potassium atoms 3k it has one fe one ion atom it has this means it has six carbon atoms and it has six nitrogen atoms so if you put everything together and their masses you get the total you write your answer down this one is called potassium this one is called potassium hexa cyano this one is called potassium hexa cyano ferrit 2 this one too has six cyanide ion it contains potassium and the ferrous ion is charged 2 plus so for potassium atoms we are looking for mass so we have more business with masses here four potassium atoms one ion atom six carbon six nitrogen put everything together get their masses and write down your product get your final answer exactly so this is called oxychlorate one acid this is called oxychlorate one <coughs> this is called oxychlorate one acid so that's what hydrogen plus oxygen plus chlorine just one hydrogen one oxygen one chlorine get their masses together add get your answer this is called 